Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin and we hope you are ready for this evening. Welcome to the 10th IAA Leadership Awards. A decade of celebrating exceptional leadership. A decade of excellence, recognizing those who have consistently raised the bar. A decade of resilience as leaders navigated challenges, emerging stronger and more determined. A decade of identifying groundbreaking companies that have transformed industries. A decade of inspiration as trailblazers paved the way for countless others to follow. decade of legacy as we honor and induct exceptional individuals into the IAA Hall of Fame. A decade of unwavering dedication by leaders who have fearlessly led from the front, shaping the IAA Leadership Awards into the perfect 10. Welcome to the 10th edition of the IAA Leadership Awards, where we continue to acknowledge and salute leaders who continue to inspire us all. couldn't wait to come on stage and celebrate this moment with you. Once again, a big round of applause for all of you, ladies and gentlemen. A very good evening. I'm your host, Angela Rubello, and a very warm welcome to the 10th edition of the IAA Leadership Awards. Well, tonight, we're all gathered here to celebrate this momentous milestone, a decade of celebrating exceptional leadership. And it truly is an honor for me standing here in front of you. Uh, this is my third year. I mark my hat trick with RAA Leadership Awards. And again, it is an honor surrounded by some exceptional individuals. You know, you have set the bar high, leading by example, and inspiring 
countless others to come. On that note, in this room, we are privileged to have the best and the brightest minds from various industries, each one a trailblazer in their own way. Your visionary ideas and unwavering determination have been the driving force behind counts, countless success stories shaping the world we live in today. And your dedication, resilience, and innovative spirit have not only transformed businesses and organizations, but have also made a positive impact on the society and the economy at large. So ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a very special occasion as we pay a homage to a perfect 10. With each one of you in this room embodying excellence and in leadership, your success stories will inspire not just the ones in the room, but also the future generation of aspiring leaders to come in. It is now time, ladies and gentlemen, to put your hands together for each one of you in this room. And now, to officially kickstart this evening and welcome all of you, we'd like to welcome on stage Mr. Avinash Pandey, President IAA India Chapter. Come on, everybody. Well, good evening, everyone. On behalf of IA India chapter, let me extend a warm welcome to all of you. Uh, it is a heartwarming to see the who is who of advertising, media, marketing, communication world in a single room. The IA sees itself as the global compass for marketing and communication. And these awards are one of the initiatives that focus on furthering this. The seeds of the IA leadership award were sown way before the first edition of the award which was conducted in 2013 by Pradeep Guha, no more amongst us, Ramesh Narayan, and finally were launched under the chairmanship of Raj Nayak. Raj, where are you? You have reached here? OK. Uh, these awards were initiated with the intent of honor and felicitating those who have made enormous uh, contribution and delivered business successes uh, to their organization in the year gone by. Raj, supported by the might of the organization, went on to grow the award by five straight years, along with Kaushik, uh, Kaushik Roy, Ramesh Narayan, uh, Neeraj, Puneet Goenka, uh, and the bar was raised each year to a different level. Five years back, Pradeep Guha roped in Nandini Dias, uh, my colleague uh, sitting in the center, hello, uh, to add the heft of the data process and Dr. Bhaskar Das, uh, I hope he has come uh, uh, to ensure the financial viability. We all know how to do ad sales from Dr. Bhaskar Das. The stature of the IA leadership as we see today is a collective effort of many individuals. And please forgive me if I have not taken uh, everyone's name, but this year we completed a decade and what a magnificent decade of 10 years. The 10th edition of these awards is a testament of enduring uh, spirit of innovations and resilience that define our industry. And we gather here tonight to celebrate not only the past accolades, uh, accomplishments, but also the limitless possibility that is lying ahead of us. So I would like to extend my deep gratitude to our jury partners. And thank you, Mr. Godrej who have made this evening possible, and to all those who over the past 10 years have put the countless uh, dedication and tireless effort to craft this award and this extraordinary journey year on year. On behalf of all of us at IA, I would like to congratulate and applaud your effort in strengthening businesses, brands that have lifted the country at large. So thank you for inspiring me and so many of us in this room beyond, and the congratulations to all the winners tonight. Before I conclude, I would like to mention that we will be conducting the eighth edition of the India Awards uh, very soon next month. 
and we recognize creative work done by brands in the top advertising category, which will be awarded uh, early next month. Our continuous space in this effort uh, in the gender sensitivity continue with various roadshows planned for the voice of change. Thank you, Megha, Nina, my colleague here who actually spearheaded this. And lastly, let me take this uh, opportunity to invite all of you, please don't miss this, to join the Indian delegation to the Ad Asia 23 South Korea. See all. And we are happy that Sam Balsara, who is the most popular person amongst us here, has consented to be the leader of Indian delegation. So I'm hoping that around at least three-digit number Sam would be accompanying you to, uh, to the Seoul. Uh, as many of you know, this is the largest uh, celebration of advertising, marketing, and uh, communication in Asia. Uh, due to circumstances beyond our control, we could not go to Lahore in 2019 and Macau in 2021. So after six years, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have the opportunity to bond together and learn media and advertising uh, businesses across Asian uh, colleague of ours and experience this in Korea. Uh, we have a small snippet of what lies ahead, so let's have a look of that. The 21st century has witnessed the meteoric rise of Korea as a global leader in cultural content creation. At the center of this creative explosion is the dynamic city of Seoul, the host of Ad Asia 2023, one of the great capital cities of the world. Seoul is the grand canvas upon which the defining narratives of our time are being sketched. The pandemic has set in motion tremendous shifts in a short span of time. It has accelerated changes that were already underway in the advertising industry such as increased adoption of new media and channels in line with digital transformation, advances in AI and big data analytics, which have made programmatic advertising more accurate, and a further blurring of the boundary between advertising and cultural content. So what are our challenges and strategies for survival? In the post-corona era, the plan is skills and ideas of young advertising professionals who are new media savvy and can quickly adapt to the environment which shine the brightest. I think that is the biggest strength of the Asian advertising industry. At Asia Seoul, uh, we'll invite the world's best marketing communication schools to the stage where we will strive together to find a solution. At Asia 2023 Seoul's successful campaign. 최선을 다할 것을 약속드리면서 Welcome to AdAsia 2023 Seoul, Asia's largest advertising festival. See you in Seoul in 2023. Thank you. So the great cake content with Sam Balsara in Seoul. I hope all of you are going to enjoy it. Thank you very much. Let the award ceremony begin now. Thank you so much, sir. Now joining us next on stage is someone who has led this evening and brought it to fruition for yet another year. To talk to us a little more about it, uh, please join me with a huge round of applause as we welcome on stage Nandini Dias, Chairperson IAA Leadership Awards 2023.
Hello, hello, everybody, and a really warm welcome and good evening to all. You know, every year when I sit down to decide what I should say on this evening, because I've been doing this now for five years, it puts me in a slightly reflective, even introspective state of mind. Of course, this is an evening to celebrate and recognize and to respect the forces that influence us all, not just as a sector or an economy, but also as a society, a community, and possibly even a civilization. The I Leadership Award is an opportunity to appreciate and respect the power of the human mind at work. The criticality of decision-making, the wisdom of thought leadership, the choice between bravery and bravado, and the sheer magnetism that carries an entire team along. It is an intellectual and emotional drama playing out at its very best in our workplaces, in our marketplaces, and of course, in the infinite arena of the human mind. That is why to me, I Leadership Awards are gallantry awards, bravery awards, intelligence awards, creative awards, sporting awards, social awards, all rolled into one. Today's honors are also about one of the golden tenets of true leadership. True leaders, ladies and gentlemen, do not create just followers. They create a team of future leaders. And the I Leadership Awards have cast a deserving spotlight on this silent force at work. That is why these awards cannot be entered by an individual or an organization. Performances are identified through an exhaustive scan and search process of over 2,000 companies across 15 categories. The winning company has excelled itself much beyond the criteria of market share, CAGR, quarter to quarter sales, add to sales ratio, et cetera, et cetera. We now also look at credit ratings of the company in the stock market, brand health scores, and the all important environment, social and governance, the ESG scores. So to all the winning organizations and their leaders, this is a bow from the advertising, marketing, and media fraternity. And I'm really proud to say that the I Leadership Award has been a significant marker of time. Through what has been a tumultuous decade, to say the least, through turbulent market forces and sweeping political changes, evolutionary societal moment, giant technological leaps, historical health challenges to our species, and tectonic shifts in culture and intelligence. This show has seen it all, and some more. And today, you will see all the highlights play out in this room. What we think, how we eat, why we choose, where we search, who we like. The minds that lead this march of human progress are all here today. And it's time to give credit where it's due. So welcome, and thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Request you to please join us back on stage, Nandini, ma'am. May I also request uh, Avinash Pandey, President IAA India Chapter and Chief Executive Officer, ABP Network, to join us on stage. Now, this evening couldn't have been possible without our partners, our pillars of support. Let's hear a huge round of applause for our celebration partner, DIGO. Let's take a look at their AV. <laughs> The DIGO team couldn't join us tonight, but we have ensured our celebration this evening will be exceptional. Next up, our associate partner this evening is a brand at the core of India. With a rich legacy of over 150 years across diverse industries, it has played a pivotal role in shaping the nation's economic landscape. Let us have a look. 
welcome to my home where my family lives breathe in the charm and the love it gives look around you and you will find beautiful people of every kind the elders smile the young ones sing there is some joy in every little thing there is a role i have to play to add to life and to make it stay i do my bit in every way to help create a better day i try my best i play my part and i carry india in my heart tata working hard to play a part May I please request Jaya Sapkale, Deputy General Manager, Brand, Corporate Brand and Marketing, Tata Group, to please join us on stage. Well, well, they're not here, but thank you so much. This evening is also powered by two supporting partners. Coming up first is a network that leads with its groundbreaking innovation and disruption. Let us have a look. हर बदला एक नई आवाज से आता है इसी सोच के साथ आया टाइम्स नाउ नव भारत इस चैनल ने आते ही जनता का भरोसा जीतना शुरू कर दिया कोई भी मुख्यमंत्री दोबारा चुन कर नहीं आया मैं आऊंगा ना गुजरात का सियासी रण उद्धव सरकार के बिगड़ के समीकरण ज्ञान वापी मस्जिद का सच टाइम्स नाउ नव भारत ने हर खबर पर बारीक नजर रखी माफिया अतीत के सनसनी मर्डर की खबर पर नॉन स्टॉप कवरेज की नव भारत ने केजरीवाल सरकार का सच सामने लाया नव भारत के पास दिल्ली के मुख्यमंत्री के आवास के एक्सक्लूसिव दस्तावेज मौजूद हैं। मैंने तो अपनी इन्वेस्टिगेशन की है उसमें ये कागज आए सबसे तेजी से बढ़ता हुआ न्यूज चैनल बना टाइम्स नाउ नव भारत अब बदलेगा भारत बनेगा नव भारत May I please request Shiva Raman Ayer, Vice President, Revenue Times Network, to please join us on stage. Well, I guess you're not present with us. Moving on, our other supporting partner this evening ensures that all of us stay ahead and have our fashion game on point. Let us have a look. प्रो करगो मैन मेरा भी जाने का टाइम है क्या व्हाट <laughs> जाने का टाइम नहीं तूफान आने का टाइम है बेटी कॉलिंग ब्लूटूथ है बहन यही सही हमारे गेट अप परमानेंट एड्रेस अंकल गेट यू नोज आर माई बिजनेस गाड़ी का काटा तो बढ़ते रहेगा ये टाइम लाइन का काटा तो चुपते रहेगा वॉच मी पुट माई स्मार ऑन असम फॉलो योर सेल फॉलो योर सेल People all around giving gyan. All you gotta do is follow yourself. Or follow yourself. Uh, follow yourself. Set your own pace. Yeah. Follow yourself. Fast track, smart. Follow yourself. May I please request Koshi Koshi Sherian, our head sales CST Titan Company Limited, to please join us on stage. A big round applause for him. Thank 
Thank you. Yes. Voila. Ma'am, I'd request you to please join us back in Avinash sir as well. Nandini ma'am and Avinash sir, please join us back on stage. We have some more felicitations to go. Well, to arrive at the winners of this evening, this, there is a team that dedicatedly works to provide our jury with wide-ranging qualitative and quantitative databases, parameters, and criteria. With a huge round of applause, welcome on stage, representing our knowledge partner, we have Shikant Shinoi and Chirag Maheshwari from Lodestar UM. Once again, a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're done. Thank you, ma'am and sir. Now helping us reach the industry and our audiences are our web media partners. Let us hear a huge round of applause for Ad Gully, Campaign India, Media Brief, Media News for You, and MXM. The IAA Leadership Awards reviews countless organizations that have shown unparalleled growth. These organizations and brands have been pillars of the economy in the year gone by. And with a jury process as rigorous as Ma'am mentioned, the jury definitely had their work cut out for them. So before we proceed to the awards, let's have a look at the industry stalwarts who came together from the length and breadth of the country to help determine the winners tonight. Let's have a look at the jury, AV. <laughs> good meeting for the jury for the IAA Leadership Awards. We had many different industries and a very good jury with great diversity. And it was a very interesting experience learning from all the other jurors. And we have come up with a list of awards. It's been a great experience to be part of this jury uh, at Godridge One Building, uh, looking at the huge green expanse on the eastern side of Mumbai. That itself uh, makes you feel good and created. The process was very objective, data-based, uh, uh, but not always data-based. We could uh, bring in our area of knowledge and expertise. It was really fun spending time today discussing and debating some really high quality companies as part of the jury of, for the IAA Leadership Awards. Uh, some of the categories were hotly debated. Uh, we had close uh, uh, companies vying for the top spot, but at the end of the day, I think we as a jury were able to make more or less unanimous decisions across all of these categories. I've had an exciting day uh, being part of the IAA uh, Leadership Awards jury. We've had a really exciting day. The jury was very diverse, brought great experience across industries. And uh, really good to see the performance of so many great companies uh, uh, here in India. And uh, very educative, very exciting, creative discussions, I must say. I really enjoyed being part of this jury. The data presented was excellent. All of the data was collated over five years. 
uh, different parts and aspects of the businesses were evaluated. Uh, and the jury came from very diverse fields. So we had a very healthy conversation and discussion. It was lovely to be part of the IIA uh, jury awards. I think the jury was lovely. I uh, got to meet some wonderful people. We had great debates and there were great companies to look at. I thought the entire process for the IAA Leadership Awards was very rigorous. There's a lot of data collected, a lot of analysis, and a lot of preparation already done in the back end. Um, the discussion today was super rich. It is great being part of the IAA jury today. And uh, through the day today, we had a very rich discussion amongst jury members who brought in so much experience and so much insight. Uh, what I found very interesting was that one, the process was very organized, very data driven to start with. Uh, but two, after the data, the jury and through their experience brought in a lot of qualitative inputs as well, overlaying that quantitative data to really come out with a recommendation. Give it up for our jury. It's now time to hear from our jury chairperson, someone who leads one of India's largest conglomerates with interests in consumer goods, real estate, agriculture, among others. His visionary approach has propelled the company's growth and beyond business. He is also known for his advocacy for environmental conservation and sustainable development. Sir, it's an honor. Please give it up for our jury chairperson, Mr. Nadir Godrej, Chairman and Managing Director, Godrej Industries Limited, and Chairperson, Godrej Agrovet Limited. There are problems in the world. Each year, more are unfurled. Climate change has been there. The pandemic brought its share, inequality is very dire and may be getting even higher. And since the Russia-Ukraine war, the world has had then to endure an unexpected commodity boom. All these dangers constantly loom. Some countries succumbed to all this flack, but we are on a better track. And as commodity prices steadily decline, our inflation numbers should be fine. We already know we will survive. And now there's hope that we will thrive. Our economy is growing fast, and there are signs that this will last. Our labor laws have been such that industry couldn't do much in labor-intensive production. There was far too much obstruction. But with the stimulus of PLI, in many industries we can try. Defense exports are on the rise. In mobile phones, everyone tries. And thanks to our digital stack, there are many problems we can crack. Indeed, India could succeed where knowledge was the need. Much progress we can see in pharma, chemicals, and IT. The pandemic has accelerated future trends long awaited. E-commerce, AI, digitization, are growing fast in every nation. While digitization was a trend, the curve is now on an upward bend. The pandemic has made us wise and taught us how to digitize. Even as the pandemic wanes, these learnings will be permanent gains. The post-pandemic world for sure will be a new normal, not as before. And these new trends can only grow. Good benefits are bound to flow. The digital world's now at our feet and surely helps us to compete. And if we take the inclusive call with an economy that works for all, a democracy with give and take in which everyone has a stake and discourse is free and polite, where we listen and refuse to slight, in tough times too, we will stand tall and ensure that we do not fall. If we are smart, as well as wise, surely India is bound to rise. Today we will commemorate some leaders that made India great. Thank you. So requesting you to please stay back.
are requesting you to please stay back. So please stay back. Join us. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Nandini Ma'am and Avinash sir to please join us as uh, we'd like to present a token of our gratitude. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. Once again, sir, to you and every jury member for helping us arrive at the winners this evening. And thank you to our presenters for once again gracefully joining us here. Now, before we begin the awards this evening, let us hear it once again for our partners. Celebration partner, DIGO, associate partner, Tata Group, supporting partner, Times Network and Titan. Knowledge partner, Lodestar UM. And web media partners, Ad Gully, Campaign India, Media Brief, Media News for You, and MXM India. The time has come for us to begin our awards, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we celebrate the remarkable achievements of 15 marketers of the year whose innovative strategies, unwavering dedication, and transformative vision have left an impact on our nation's growth. We also look at seven leaders in the space of media and advertising that have led their teams to some incredible milestones and success. Along with our celebration partner, the IGO, we have one new award being presented that we will speak about in a while and the coveted IAA Hall of Fame inducting its 10th member this evening. So before I begin the awards, I want to ask everybody if I can get a quick yes from you. Are we ready for the awards? Yeah. I love that. It's fantastic. On that note, before we invite our presenters, we have a very special and important message from Governor of Maharashtra, Sri Ramesh. By ACE. Let's take a look. Our International Advertising Association ke India chapter ki taraf se leadership award diya ja raha hai. Mai sabhi vijitaon ko badhai deta hoon aur sangstha ke adhyak Avinas Pandey sahit sabhi ayojokon ko sub kamnaay deta hoon. And to present our first set of awards, join me with a huge round of applause as I welcome on stage Mr. Mitrajit Bhattacharya, IAA Mancom member and founder and president, the Horror Logistics, and Ms. Kranti Gara, IAA Mancom member and president, New Business Opportunities, Shemaru Entertainment Limited. Can we please have a big round of applause as they walk on stage? You will be presenting our first set of awards for the evening and giving away the first two awards. Our first award this evening is a category that looks at the epicenter of all things, that is money. A leader who has made a significant impact on the banking industry, shaping its trajectory and adapting to dynamic market conditions with a clear focus on retail opportunities, digital platforms and NPA management while consistently delivering value to customers and stakeholders. Let's have a look. The marketer of the year banking is Sujit Ganguly, Chief Marketing Officer, 
I see, I see, I back. Give it up for Sujit Ganguly, Chief Marketing Officer, ICICI Bank. Congratulations. Our next category also looks at transactions, but in a new way of doing things. We applaud a brand who has driven widespread adoption of digital payments and transformed the way we transact, making payments more accessible and seamless for individuals and businesses alike. A winner who has played a key role in shaping the industry in India, going beyond payments to keep users in the fold with diversified financial services. Let's have a look. The marketer of the year, UPI, is Sumit Mathur, Chief Marketing Officer, Paytm. Once again, give it up for Sumit Mathur, Chief Marketing Officer, Paytm. Thank you, presenters, and congratulations once again. And now to present our next set of awards, please welcome Mr. Anant Goenka, IAA Mancom member and executive director, the Indian Express Limited. Ms. Nina Jaipuria, IAA Mancom member and head, Hindi Mass Entertainment and Kids TV Network, YCOM 18 Media Private Limited. Thank you for joining us. We'll be presenting our next two awards. Our next category looks at brands that have embraced the digital revolution and harnessed technology to provide us with unparalleled shopping experiences. Armed um, with strong revenue growth, wide range to choose from, and a nationwide presence, here is a brand that made the digital world the best place to shop for baby and kids care products. Let's have a look. The marketer of the year e-commerce is Anu Jain, Chief Business Officer and Senior Vice President Marketing, FirstCry.com. Chief Business Officer and Senior Vice President Marketing, FirstCry.com. Our next award was added a couple of years ago in response to the booming edtech industry in India and recognizes exceptional marketing efforts that have driven remarkable growth and transformation in the education technology sector. Let's celebrate a leader who has changed the way the country learns, providing a high quality online learning experience for skills that can take careers to the next level. Let's have a look. The marketer of the year, EdTech is. 
Ashwin Damera, CEO and co-founder, Emeritus and Eruditus. Give it up for Ashwin Damera, CEO and co-founder, Emeritus. Congratulations and thank you presenters for joining us here. To present our next award, I'd like to welcome with a big round of applause, Mr. Alok Jalan, IAA Mancom member and managing director, Laksha Media Group, and Ms. Nina Dasgupta, founder and chief executive officer, The Salt Inc. Give it up for them, please. Thank you, presenters, for joining us here. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Sri Devendra Fadnavis, who is among us. Continuing with the awards, our next category looks at brands that help consumers make life easy at home. It looks at those who excel in both meeting consumer demands as well as gaining market share and fostering sustainable growth. Our winner stands tall in a highly competitive market, matching outstanding growth with unbeatable consumer focus and brand image. Let's have a look. The marketer of the year, Consumer Durables, is Sandeep Singh Arora, Online Business Unit Head, Consumer Electronics Business, Samsung Electronics. Once again, give it up for Sandeep Singh Arora, Online Business Unit Head, Consumer Electronics Business, Samsung Electronics. Our next award looks at the category that has all of us connected, catering to the evolving needs of consumers with strategies and innovation that have driven market expansion, consumer adoption, and technological advancements resulting in redefining mobile experiences. Breaking through this complex market, our winner has perfected the art of delivering high-end smartphone features at attractive price points. Supported by Make in India and other initiators, translating into winning 44% growth and 3% gain in market share. Let us have a look. The marketer of the year mobile devices is Damyan Singh Kanoria, Chief Marketing Officer, OPPO India. Please give it up for Damyan Singh Kanoria. Chief Marketing Officer, OPPO India. I think he's not present here, but congratulations. And once again, can we have a big round of applause for him? Thank you, presenters, for joining us here. 
present our next set of awards. Please welcome on stage Kaushik Roy, past president IAA India chapter and director Imagination Works, and Koshi Cherian, head sales CSD, Titan Company Limited. Please join us on stage. Okay, and you'll be presenting the next two awards. Our next category shines a spotlight on the visionaries and trailblazers who have enriched our lives with creativity, imagination, and storytelling prowess. From cinematic masterpieces to captivating TV shows, groundbreaking digital content, and awe-inspiring performances. This category celebrates the luminaires who have set new benchmarks, taken um, viewer engagement to new heights, and redefined the entertainment landscape. Let's have a look. The marketer of the year, media and entertainment is Srivats TS, Vice President Marketing, Netflix. Please give it up for Srivats TS, Vice President Marketing, Netflix India. Now, our next category looks at brands that have given us the best in the world of retail experience. This consumer electronics brand continues to grow and excel in the era of online world, adapting to changing market dynamics, enhancing the experience with a growing network of stores and dedicating uh, to delivering value, convenience and memorable experiences. Let's have a look. The marketer of the year retail is Kapil Buduk, head of marketing, Chroma, Infinity Retail Limited. Give it up for Kapil Buduk, head of marketing, Chroma, Infinity Retail Limited. Thank you, congratulations. And now before we move on to our next category, along with our celebration partner, Diageo, we are thrilled to announce a new category that recognizes individuals and organizations that exemplify resilience and an unwavering spirit to keep pushing boundaries and helping us all move ahead. Keep walking has always been a rallying cry for progress, a joyful expression of optimism. IAA and DIGO both believe that walking together and celebrating our journeys will open up newer avenues for all of us. Walkers & Co. is a platform that celebrates, enables, and inspires people who take these bold steps to drive collective progress. Just like the iconic Keep Walking mantra, this award celebrates those who have shown the courage to forge ahead, inspire others, and make a positive impact on the world. Let's have a look. The IAA and Walkers and Company Keep Walking Award is presented to Tarun Mehta from Aether Energy.
driven by passion and purpose, Aether Energy is transforming the way we commute. And while Tarun Mehta could not be with us here today, this evening, he will be accepting his award virtually. Let's have a look and see what he has to say. Hi, I'm Tarun, co-founder and CEO at Aether Energy. Uh, thank you to the nomination committee and the members of the jury at IA Leadership Awards for my nomination and selection for the first ever Keep Walking Awards. Uh, it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic to, to, to be here today for this. Um, there's been a lot of work that's happening in the mobility and the sustainability sector in India, and it has been at the forefront of it. Over the last 10 years, we've been investing, creating IP, and creating and, and building products in the electric scooter space. India moves on two wheelers, and if India has to go clean, if India has to go electric, it, the story is going to be written on two wheels. Aether has been in the forefront of it. We we built the largest R&D, we built one of the largest portfolios, and all of that has led to a very significant difference in how the sector has electrified. In the last two years, we have grown almost 20, 30 times. The sector itself has grown 10 times, uh, now on a run rate of about a million vehicles per annum. But in India, that's just scratching the surface. The opportunity is 250 million vehicles that are on the road today. I hope this award inspires all of us, many others, to make even more contribution in this space and contribute towards the electrifying of all these vehicles. Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Mehta. And now, before we move to the next set of awards, it is time to set the stage for a conversation as I invite on stage a dynamic and visionary leader who has carved a remarkable path in Indian politics, leaving a lasting mark on Maharashtra as the nation as a whole. Well, as the youngest chief minister of Maharashtra, he spearheaded transformative initiatives that propelled the state's development to new heights. With a focus on infrastructure, governance, reforms, and sustainable growth. In his 30 plus years of political career, his unwavering commitment to the public welfare and his astute understanding of governance intricacies make him a beacon of leadership and a source of inspiration to all of us. He strongly believes that politics is an instrument for socio-economic change and his political career of 25 years continues to reflect the same. His capacity to work tirelessly and relentlessly comes from his mantra that is people first. We eagerly anticipate the insights and wisdom that he will share with us here today. So, ladies and gentlemen, with a big, big round of applause, let's welcome on stage Honorable Sri Devendra Fadnavis, Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra. Along with him, also welcome Anand Goenka, IAA Mancom member and executive director, the Indian Express. Let's give them a big round of applause. It's uh, always a Big pleasure to meet and uh, interact with Devendraji. I've known him for many years now. Uh, and I just, uh, I was told a few hours ago that I've got to have this conversation with him. I was told, uh, don't make it too political. Uh, and I was told that it should be something where Devendraji also has fun. So I'm going to try doing both. Um, but this thing that I was asked to do by the leading marketers of India, don't make it too political. The politician ka brand, is it getting bad more than it used to be earlier? Is it getting better? Brand politician as a profession. Aap uspe kuch, tell us what you think about the brand politician. Dekhye, jo jada bikta hai, uspe jada charcha hoti hai. 
so politics is like that you know unfortunately if you look at the films initially after independence sahukar was the villain then you know it was in shole jab uh, the villain used to be daku then uske baad phir smuggler aajkal aap film dekhiye usme do hi villain aapko dikhte hai ya to politician dikhta hai ya police wala dikhta hai so i think uh, having said that i think politics is all about building brand it is all about communication see those politicians who have been winning elections who have been uh, you know constantly people are supporting them these are the people who are best communicators like our prime minister uh, modi ji is one of the best communicators in this country he communicates with the last man even the last man feels that this person is talking with me and he is talking about me so i think it's all about brand modi it likewise there are several leaders in this country who who have developed their own brand uh, their own style of politics their own style of communication and i think that is what is needed today uh, you know in in today's polity uh, your personality is also defined by what type of reels you make what type of reels people watch about you so it's changing i mean the perception is is uh, is all about uh, you know politics is all about perception so i think uh, that's that's a, a big challenge devendra ji uh, 13 i think 13 years ago when i first met you uh communicating you you touched on this i want to get into a little bit more communicating as a politician 13 years ago and communicating as a politician today what has changed i think uh, the thing that has changed is that 13 years ago it was a very deep communication you know uh, the communication was uh, more serious than today today communication is more about perception i mean what point you make so peep there's so much to consume yeah. so you know people have a very short memory today because every second they have something to consume either on their mobile or on the tv or on some other media so today it is about making your point that's all and for that do you feel that you need to become louder and louder i mean do you feel that there's a competition that you have with yourself no. i have got to be more you know sensational i'm i'm speaking almost as a news person but it's because politician politics and news goes quite hand in hand so we also then seem that the industry news I, industry gets louder and louder and i i don't think you have to be louder but you have to be smarter it is a time when the communication has to be very smart and of course smart communication means creating few sensations but if you just go on creating sensation and that sensation is not backed by your action then people will not believe in you so every thing which you portray must be backed by action so i think that is the key today you know uh, when we first met i i i i've told you this before you know you always struck me as one of those young politicians bjp's young politician who had a lot of strong personal convictions you know you you had your beliefs you were very strong about your views somewhere in this world where you're communicating in a short attention span do you feel that your personal convictions are kind of you feel forced to match your personal convictions with what the with what the audience wants but the audience ka conviction should be matching with yours now because you're in this game that you are absolutely like right, uh, right. Uh, to some extent that's absolutely true because you know uh, ultimately you have to be relevant in the game and to be relevant you see we are in a democracy and in democratic world you have to think about people's aspiration you have to match the people's aspiration and a leader has to mold the people's aspiration so it is always you know a fight between matching the aspiration and molding the aspiration matching the aspiration is very easy because you have to flow you have to actually swim with the with the flow but molding the aspiration is something which is very tough 
and i think as a leader you have to understand that going with the flow always is not the way you can win election by going with the flow but if you want real transformation that real transformation can come only when you have capacity to mold the views of people to mold the aspirations of people the one thing that i feel sometimes is common between advertisers and politicians is that sometimes both have to be little liberal with the truth uh, you, you know you've got to kind of say things that you need to say to agar aap agar aap seat pe rahoge nahi then how will you be able to uh, think uh, how do you how do you process that when you're faced with this problem ki you know sometimes you got to you know duck a true question or you got to you know not go to a space where you know you're on a weak footing how do you how do you process so this i have convinced myself there are always three sides one is your side one is my side and one is true side so i mean you have to you know have to 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 have conviction that you are right but there is always a true side and yes there are there are certain times when you have to duck the questions because you know you you just cannot justify every single thing so many things happen in your life there are certain things in your life where your conviction doesn't allow you to you know justify those things but ultimately you have to live with truth because in today's world if you are out of game you are out of game if you remain in your game then you may be able to act up to 80% according to your conviction so i think for me if you ask me uh, i would always like to be in the game and then to work with my conviction so devendra ji the abhi jo the alliance that's happened uh, you were obviously waiting for that question to come i'm sure but was that that 20% moment or was it in the 80% moment so, you see that is about you know the true side i have my side they have their side and there is a true side so for me to stay relevant in the politics this alliance was necessary i did not been necessary i would not have gone with them but today when everybody is grouping against me against my party against my leader then i cannot say no i'll fight alone aap game mein reh kar hi fight kar sakte ho interesting so uh and i don't want to ask too many tough political questions but i just force of habit i guess um devendra ji what would you say to that first time voter you know wo jo baith ke aapke manifesto pad rahe hain he is making a educated you know he spending a lot of hours discussing he's not voting because his parents are voting a particular way he's thought it through he's gone and voted for a particular party a particular politician who he believes should be leading maharashtra and then they all just get together and then you know they the, the alliance is something completely sort of what they hadn't thought of aap kya bolenge unko jo he's invested in, you know the that the few people who spent time in thinking about it you know first thing i will say please register as voter why i'm saying that i would like to use this platform to appeal uh, the young voter because the other day i was uh, uh, sitting with the election commissioner of maharashtra Uh, and then we had a meeting with uh, all the uh, vice chancellors of the university because uh, you know we we found out that uh, between the age of 18 and 22 only 11% people are registered as voters so they may have their views but those views will never reflect You're talking about including the migrants who have come in or people who live in maharashtra in maharashtra the, the only 11% 18 to 22 now it must have uh, i mean number must have increased because we started a a, a campaign uh, government also started a campaign uh, vice chancellors also started a campaign maybe 30% but it's still a frightening small yeah, number 70% yeah. people who have views those views are not important because they are not voting your view is important if you are a voter if you don't vote and in in democracy if you say that this should have happened that should have happened it is your loss you didn't go for vote you didn't register so i would like to first tell all these young people that be part of democracy be part of the change you want register yourself as voter assert 
and you have a power to change a government as well because you see it's a youthful country our median age is 27 so yeah. 18 to 22 is such a large number of voters who can actually make a difference so i think the first thing i would like to appeal them appeal to them is to register as voters and brand maharashtra as when devendra as deputy uh, devendra as cm and brand maharashtra with devendra fadnavis as deputy cm what is the difference there's not much difference. The only difference is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm now deputy. That is the only difference. Otherwise, brand Maharashtra is there. It is there to stay. And I'm telling you that, you see, uh, when our prime minister aspires to make uh, India a 5 trillion economy, Maharashtra has, has to lead the way. Because Maharashtra is powerhouse of India. And I think Maharashtra has to become a trillion dollar economy to make India a five trillion economy. And I'm sure, uh, you see, in Maharashtra, uh, with, with our strategy of, uh, you know, uh, we, we believe that today the speed of travel and the speed of data will determine how we will develop. And you see the amount of infrastructure which we are creating because speed of travel not only gives you ease of living but also saves time it saves money it saves it it it, it becomes a, a part of globe if you want to become a part of global supply chain you have to have hassle free movement yeah. of goods so the speed of travel and the speed of data of course we are in an era of 5g and this speed of data will make us reach the last man of the society. So I think these are the two things and leveraging, you know, uh, uh, the technology. In fact, we can, uh, we can develop. So brand Maharashtra is all about technology. Brand Maharashtra is all about, uh, you know, uh, startup. And I must tell you, wherever I get a forum, I tell people that today there are many cities which boast that they are startup capitals. No, the startup capital of India is Maharashtra because Maharashtra accounts for highest number of startups. We account for 16,000 startups out of 90,000 registered startups in India. And amongst 100 unicorns, Maharashtra accounts for 25 unicorns. So we are the business magnet of India. I actually, I didn't know about the startup fact, so I've learned uh, this piece today. Um, you brought up uh, Ma Maharashtra being 1 trillion for India to be 5 trillion. I'll ask one last question, then I'll get to rapid fire. Um, tell us a little bit about that, the, the big uh, sort of investments or FDI was supposed to come into Maharashtra and didn't. Foxconn, hai, Airbus, hai, drugs, hai. What, where did... I think, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I must not be saying this, but uh, thrice we missed Foxconn. I mean, uh, twice because of the geopolitical situation and third time, you know, uh, ultimately, uh, there was a policy paralysis in Maharashtra for some time and uh, that deal was expecting something concrete from the uh, you know investment committee and the investment committee in Maharashtra did not meet for 18 months and you know in, in today's competitive world you cannot sit idle and you cannot sit for 18 months without uh, having a meeting of investment committee but I think uh, uh, having said that Maharashtra is a magnet there will be a one day when Foxconn will have to come to Maharashtra. Lovely the confidence. I'll get to rapid fire, but if uh, Mr. Godrej or other wants to ask a question, please just sh like wave at me in the middle or please. Okay. So, so Devinji, rapid fire, short answers, and it's a, it's it's the fun it's the fun part of the evening. Uh, okay. Devinji, when will Mumbai's coastal road be ready? Uh, end of this year. End of this year, major part of coastal road will be open to the people. Only the last part of the coastal road, because we increased, uh, uh, you know, the gap Under between, uh, 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 you know, two poles. So that that will be uh, uh, that will be yet to be finished. Otherwise, by end of this year, we'll start the coastal road. 
um, the last Bollywood, I know you like movies, the last Bollywood film you watched and enjoyed? <laughs> I don't want to tell because I did not enjoy that movie. <laughs> All of us know that uh, for that movie, everybody was excited and it uh, ultimately failed. So I don't want to name that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got uh, Adi of your answer. So <laughs> <laughs> The one political party you will the one political party you will never enter into an alliance with. Congress. Congress. Indian National Congress. The one politician you will never enter an alliance with who is not from the Congress. No, I think, uh, uh, I mean, politician as such, uh, you know, uh, I think in, in politics, we are not enemies. You know, we are uh, actually political opponents. So I won't say that I won't interact with a politician like that, but you know, we are absolutely opposed to the policies of Congress. So maybe any, any, anybody from Congress or anybody who is, uh, uh, you know, prone to the ideology of Congress, I'll never uh, enter into alliance with them. The one politician who is not in your alliance, but who you admire, so, you know, uh, uh, there are many, uh, but uh, you know, in politics, you should not say that because nowadays, if uh, you know, you say that this politician of this party is a good politician, immediately that video will be circulated everywhere. And look, Mr. Fadnavis has <laughs> endorsed me and my party or my leader. So that is disastrous for me. So in our private conversation, I will tell you three people who I admire. <laughs> and they are not from my party. Yeah, privately, I think I know the answers, but anyway. Um, Dimitri, the one advertisement that you remember today, that you like and you remember. Ah. From any time. You just don't, don't think current. <laughs> can be from any time. You see, the best which we have been admiring for many days is Amul. Amul. Even today. Fantastic. You've made a few tables very happy here, clearly. Devanji, um, brand INDIA, what does it mean to you? <laughs> See, I thank, thank you for calling it INDIA. If you would have called it India, I would never like India to fail. INDIA is going to fail, but India will never fail. Aside from Narendra Modi, one politician you think who would make an outstanding advertiser? There are many. You know, uh, I mean, uh, I can name 10 people who are the best actors. <laughs> apart from being politicians. So, maybe not appropriate to name them. Okay, uh, I'll end with the last question. Divinji, uh, I know you like long drives. We know you like to go on long drives. So just imagine that the coastal road has opened, the full coastal road has opened, and you have to get in, you have to choose between two cars to get into for this long drive. One car is driven by Mahatma Gandhi, and the other car is driven by Veer Savarkar. Which car do you choose? I would like to drive myself. <laughs> I'll ask them. Whosoever is ready to sit with me <laughs> while I am driving, he is welcome. Divinji has been dodging the questions very well and appropriately. Thank you so much for Thank being you. at IAA. Thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big round of applause for Honorable Sir. And Anant, what an incredible session this was. Once again, a big round of applause, please. Thank you. Requesting you to please stay back. Uh, Anant, you can also join and be a part of the felicitation. Requesting uh, Avinash sir and Nandani ma'am to please join us on stage for a felicitation. A token of our gratitude to you, sir.
honorable sir requesting you to please stay back a little longer honorable sir requesting you to please stay back a little longer ladies and gentlemen let me remind you that you just witnessed an incredible conversation please give it up one more time and i have to thank you honorable sir for being so very candid at this very platform of iaa leadership awards 2023 now to present our next set of awards and join sir on stage please welcome with a huge round of applause sam balsara iaa mancom member and chairman and managing director madison communications private limited along with rana barua iaa mancom member and chief executive officer havas group india and anup vishwanathan executive vice president and head of network brand strategy times network thank you for joining us presenters we'll be presenting the next two awards our next award looks at those who have accelerated india's two wheeler revolution redefining the joy of riding and empowering the nation with efficient and stylish mobility solutions for motorcycles to scooters and now e-bikes they have transformed the way we commute enhancing our mobility and freedom Our winner ranks among the top brands in the category with an impressive 16% growth, scaling new heights in both the domestic and export market. Let us the marketer of the year, Auto Two Wheelers is Anirudh Halda, Senior Vice President. Marketing TVS Motor Company. Let us hear a huge round of applause one more time for Anirudha Haldar, Senior Vice President, Marketing TVS Motor Company. Our next category looks at those who have not only driven exceptional growth but have also built emotional connections with consumers making their brand an integral part of our lives with 58% growth and 3% share gain against strong competition our winner is already a dominant force in the SUV market let us take a look the marketer of the year auto passenger vehicles is shailesh chandra managing director tata motors passenger vehicles limited and tata passenger electric mobility limited shailesh chandra managing director tata motors passenger vehicle limited and tata passenger electric mobility limited congratulations Congratulations to our winner and uh thank you to my presenters honorable sir request you please stay back a little longer Our next award is one of the big ones of the night. This one looks at honoring an individual that has led their business with great acumen, delivering win after win and surpassing goals and expectations by some distance. 
not only instrumental in driving the company's growth and success, but his relentless humanitarian pursuit has earned him widespread respect and admiration. To join Sir on stage and present this award, please welcome with a huge round of applause, Nadal Godrich, Jury Chairperson and Chairman and Managing Director, Godrich Industries Limited, Chairperson Godrich Agrovit Limited. Avinash Pandey, President IAA India Chapter, please join us back. Nandini Dai is Chairperson IAA Leadership Awards 2023. Raj Nayak, past president, IAA India chapter and founder, and MD, House of Cheer Networks Private Limited. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let us have a look at the winner. The IAA Business Leader of the Year is Adar Poonawala from Serum Institute. Inspiring and shaping the pharmaceutical landscape on a global level, we salute his commitment to creating a better and healthier world for all of us. Once again, a big round of applause for Adar Poonawala. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a big round of applause, please. And now, may I request Mr. Raj Nayak to please read out the citation. The India chapter of the International Advertising Association is proud to recognize Adar Punawala as the IA Business Leader of the Year 2023. For unlocking India's potential in the healthcare sector, for revolutionizing vaccine manufacturing, for his outstanding leadership during the COVID-19 pandemic, for his commitment to social responsibility and exceptional contributions to public health, for elevating an Indian brand to global recognition, for making a tremendous impact on society at large. Signed, Avinash Pandey, President IA India Chapter, August 9, 2023. Once again, ladies and gentlemen. And now with that, Thank you to our presenters and Honorable Sri Devendra Fadnavis. Thank you for joining us. May we kindly request Mr. Poonawala and Ms. Dias to please stay back. So, before we move ahead with a lovely conversation, request you to please say a few words. Um, a very warm and good evening to everyone, Honorable Fadnavis Ji, members of the media, um, members of Bollywood and uh, the corporate world, thank you so much, IAA, for this honor and recognition. I am truly humbled to receive this, and uh, it really, truly vindicates all the risks and effort that my team and I took during the pandemic. It was a tough time for everybody and a, a time of great uncertainty. 
uh, you know, we wouldn't have been able to do this without our countless staff and workers, healthcare workers, uh, uh, you know, the government of India, the central government, our state of Maharashtra, which has always been a home to Serum Institute, and uh, we continue to invest and grow there. And to Honorable Fadnavis G's point, uh, it is our preferred state of choice for many, many reasons, and will always continue to do so. Um, you know, uh, I would just like to say that uh, I've always believed that Serum Institute has been a national asset uh, to the country. And um, during the pandemic, this became more and more evident. Um, there are very few institutes and manufacturing hubs to be able to take care of bioterrorism or you know, a pandemic or outbreaks. And I consider myself truly privileged and honored that I can lead such an institute and serve the nation and humanity at large. And I hope to continue to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your contributions to making the world a better place. And uh, we will continue the conversation. And I'd like to request Nandini Dais to please join me on stage for the conversation. Nandini is here. So first, at the outset, a big, big congratulations. And I think an even bigger thank you for all that you and SII has done for the country, for saving lives, for bettering health, and, uh, and special during the pandemic. Just doing my job. No, I... So, uh, you know, this is the first known global pandemic that we had. And due to the connected world, the panic set in really quickly. Um, the pressure of, to earn biotechnology companies was just immense. Uh, share with us what was your state of mind? Uh, what were you going through at that point of time? Well, I mean, as the world was going into a crisis mode, it was, um, you know, a very few a handful of companies that decided to either take risk and put your foot forward. And since we're talking about marketing and building brands, it was also an opportunity, a very risky one to try and perform because the ones who failed, you know, destroyed a lot of value in their brand and their ability to deliver. Whereas we succeeded with a lot of challenges, ups and downs. We had a fire as well and so many other geopolitical issues. And we just saw it as an opportunity to serve our nation and to also create a brand globally where a lot of uh, global companies and the world always looked at India as, you know, I mean, it doesn't look at India that way anymore in the last, you know, five, 10 years, but at least in the pharma sector and other sectors, we weren't sort of seen as global players, leaders who could, you know, have that impact. And this was an opportunity to show the world that not only can we serve a nation as large as ours, and, you know, our vaccination rate, thanks to Modi ji's leadership was higher than even the United States and many developed countries. And that was a testament to our ability to collectively work together and that get things done and also to help other nations. So that's where I saw, you know, um, our ability to perform and deliver on, on all of that. But that's a businessman talking. Tell me at a person, I mean, at a individual level, what were the emotions that you were going? Because there were so many people uh, in a way dependent and every day the crisis that we were hearing around us was uh, really uh, heart trending at a personal level, at an emotional level. No, absolutely. I mean, look, every year we make vaccines which protect children's lives and we yeah. give it, you know, at a price which is less than a dollar a dose. Yeah. You know, our profit margins are very, very minuscule. Our main objective is to address outbreaks and diseases across the globe. Yeah. And, um, you know, initially, we, when we were talking to the government, we said, look, uh, we're not interested in any commercial contracts or anything like that. We just want to talk about delivering as much product as we can and get, you know, as much protection as we can to the population 
before the second and third waves hit. Yeah. So um, it's always been emotional and that's also what drives us at Serum Institute. Waking up every day knowing that we're, we're working toward a cause that is you know, not business related, we're not a listed company, we don't have to drive for super profits or you know, sh uh, shareholders and stakeholders, unlike in my finance yes. company where I have to do a bit of that. But here, you know, everything is driven by your heart and where you want to make a difference, especially, for example, in the continent of Africa, where we are launching the world's second, you know, malaria vaccine at the end of this year. Okay, uh, just changing here. Do you see vaccine development being led by disease? Or will vaccines ward off diseases? No, I, I think... Mean, will it be preventive or reactive? No, I think uh, what's going to drive the development is innovation and technology also. Yeah. You've got messenger RNA and all these other new ways of uh, research today. Um, I think as we see uh, progress and those technologies working, we'll automatically get a lot of solutions and vaccines and uh, things like that. Uh, for example, we have a cure for dengue. You know, we were struggling earlier on to get regulatory approvals for this product because it was the first in the world, first time in the world type of product. Now the regulation is such with the reforms that we propose to the Modi government and the health ministry that we're now able to fast track all those trials and in about a year and a half, we're going to have a cure for dengue in India very soon. So these are remarkable uh, things that are possible, you know, with a progressive government mindset, with progressive uh, 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 facilities and, 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 you know, it's not about schemes and freebies and all that. All we need is a stable uh, government which understands progress and that's what we're fortunate to have. And that's why you're seeing so much more innovation and progress happening in this sector. At least. Now, there is much discussion about vaccine diplomacy, right? And uh, shifting global health dynamics. Uh, I read an HBR article and it mentioned, and I quote, that they said China is using vaccination support as a strategic investment to support its Belt and Road Initiative. How has it opened relationship for us? Well, yeah, during the pandemic, um, whichever countries would have excess vaccines, it was a soft power of such. And uh, we worked with our foreign ministry and the PMO's office to ensure that first starting with our neighbors and so many other countries, I think about 70 countries we ended up supporting during the pandemic, um, uh, which again was, was very good for our relations. And uh, India has always taken the view, even before that with hydrochloroquine and tablets, which we had given to the US, that yes, we look after our own, but we'll also try and help at the same time as many countries as possible without compromising, of course, you know, the requirements of the nation. So it was a very effective tool. And I think going forward also, it's a good way of sharing resources globally and being part of globalization. And I think in the G20 coming up just now, that will also play a major role. So and what, uh, you feel China is using it effectively and are there any lessons to learn from that? China is not able to do anything. In fact, if you see the manufacturing and investment is shifting all towards India. Uh, you know, with our democratic policies and way of doing things, um, people feel far safer. When you go to Davos, you go to international forums, and um, I see the kind of response our chief ministers of states who, you know, set up shop there and, you know, talk about India. The response they're getting compared to any other country is phenomenal. And now with Russia also having its issues, there's very few places that you can find companies wanting to invest in, you know, uh, with the situation in China and their poor handling of the pandemic has uh, certainly moved and accelerated a lot of people who are anyway thinking about India to come to India. Uh, you've been doing a lot for children and almost 65% of the, uh, you know, uh, children around the world, I'm told, has at least one vaccine manufactured by SII. You have two young sons, I think. Cyrus is here. Is this something that you would like to advise parents to watch out for as long-term, short-term, you know, consequences of COVID? And what should they be looking out for? Well, I'm not a doctor, but, yes. uh, you know, 
Um, during the pandemic, I think everyone felt that, you know, these are uh, long-term reactions and side effects can always be there for drugs and vaccines and all of that. Um, there's never something that you can take, even a combiflam tablet today you take can give you a reaction in very, very rare or few cases and any medication for that matter. Um, I think the COVID vaccines that were developed at rapid pace, all the clinical studies and all of that was done and tested in people in a smaller group before it went out to, into a larger group. Um, Long-term effects of COVID and vaccine-related events can always be there, but they're so minute and mostly treatable that, you know, I think we did quite well as a scientific community, whether it was our COVID vaccine or other COVID vaccines that were developed. Uh, fair. I think, uh, should I just open it out to the audience? Does anybody want to ask a question before I, uh, this, anyone? Mr. Fadis, do can I lean on you to ask a question? Do you want to ask him? That would be lovely. Right. So, thank you very much, thank and uh, congratulations once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that lovely conversation. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear a big round of applause. And now, to present our next set of awards to marketers, let me welcome on stage our jury chairperson, Nader Godridge, along with Pradeep Dvivedi, IAA Mancom member and group CEO, Eros Media World PLC, and Vikram Sakuja, group CEO, Madison Media and OOH Madison World. Please put your hands together for them. Thank you for joining us. You'll be presenting the next two awards. We move to our next category, looking at everything from everyday essentials to gourmet delights, making every day a celebration of flavors, cultures, and memories to cherish. Here is a brand that is an inseparable part of our kitchens, a brand that continues to gain share in the challenging FMCG market, and a brand that has achieved an impressive 16% growth from a leadership position. So ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look. The marketer of the year, FMCG food is Jayan Mehta. Managing Director, Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation Limited, Amul. Making every day utterly, butterly delicious. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, give it up for Jen Mehta, Managing Director, Gujarat Cooperative Milk Marketing Federation Limited, Amul. Congratulations once again. For our next category, we look at brands that have become an integral part of our daily lives with their commitment to quality, efficacy, and consumer centricity, and their dedication to creating products that empower us to look and feel our best. Our winner's inspiring story of growth has been the driving force behind its transition from Ayurvedic remedies to iconic wellness. Let's take a look. The marketer of the year, FMCG personal care is Rajesh Krishnamurti, business director, consumer products division, Himalaya Wellness Company. 
Let's hear a huge round of applause for Rajesh Krishnamurthy, Business Director, Consumer Products Division, Malia Wellness Company. Congratulations and thank you to our presenters. Mr. Gozrich, please stay back. And now to present our next set of awards and join Sir, let me welcome on stage Ashwin Damera, jury member, IAA Leadership Awards 2023, and CEO and co founder, Emeritus and Editus, and Mr. Jadeep Gandhi, Henri Treasury. IAA India chapter and founder Another Idea. Please give it up for them. Thank you for joining us. You'll be presenting our next two awards. Our next category moves the focus from personal care to our homes with products and services that transform the way we take care of our abode. Our winner has achieved category leading growth in the home care segment and gained market share where others have degrown successfully driving the premium shift in home care. Let's take a look. The marketer of the year, FMCG Home Care is Deepak Subramanian, Executive Director, Home Care, Hindustan Unilever Limited. Huge round of applause for Deepak Subramanian, Executive Director, Home Care Hindustan Unilever Limited. Congratulations. Our next category looks at brands from refreshing beverages to energizing drinks and excelsiors that have been delighting our taste buds, sorry, and satisfying our thirst for variety. Our winner has been a household name for years, but continues to drive growth across its beverage brands backed by a strong portfolio, supply chain and distribution network. Let's have a look. The marketer of the year, FMCG Beverages is Sunil D'Souza, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director, Tata Consumer Products Limited. Let's hear a huge round of applause for Sunil D'Souza, CEO and MD, Tata Consumer Products Limited. Congratulations. Congratulations, and thank you to our presenters and our jury chairperson for joining us. Thank you. And now for our next, I'd like to invite on stage Neeraj Roy, IAA Mancom member, Hangama Digital Media Entertainment Private Limited, along with Nandini Dias and Avinash Pandey. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a look at this winner in this category. 
The IAA Brand Endorser of the Year is Ajay Devgar. And now, Mr. Devgan requests you to please stay back. And sir, yes, we're going to have a lovely conversation on stage. Firstly, it's such a pleasure to have you here with us. And indeed, before the conversation begins, I want to ask everybody, are we ready for this one? Yes? Absolutely. That note? I'm going to leave it to both the gentlemen on stage. Good evening, friends. <laughs> Have you having, are you having a good evening? Uh, once again, uh, our thanks to our jury chair, all our distinguished jury members, and our very, very distinguished uh, winners of the IA Leadership Awards, including to Adar the IA Business Leader of the Year Award. I'm delighted uh, today to have this conversation with a gentleman who is uh, not so sort of easy to get hold of. So let me, before we start, let me sort of, you know, tee this up in the right way. So he debuts in 1991, goes on to win a Filmfare Award, Follows up with three more, then follows up with four, I believe, national awards. In the last 32 years, 115 films, aggregating a little over 5,000 crores. This is impressive, Ajay. <laughs> By any standard, this is exemplary leadership. And it is at the best because you, re you, as I said, you remain, he remains quiet, he remains reticent, and would, some would believe even reclusive. But you've been an actor, he's been a producer, and he's also been a director. That is passion of taking cinema to its entire level. Ajay, first, just share with us, you know, your journey these 32 years. What inspired you to get to cinema and how have you kept yourself relevant these 32 years in sort of from acting to producing to directing? Good evening, everybody. Uh, what inspired me? I think since I was, I remember, I would say, as a child, uh, cinema was always around me and was everything to me because of my father. Uh, he was one of the topmost action directors and then became a director. Uh, very innovative, uh, technically very, very strong at that point of time where we did not have that kind of technology and VFX and things like this. He would create things which were practically impossible. And uh, that fascinated me always and I learned a lot from him. I think when I was 9 or 10 years old, I started editing with him. So by 11 years or 12 years, I used to, when I was 11 or 12, I used to edit the sequences he used to shoot. And uh, he got me a camera and I started shooting films in whatever capacity I could. So I loved the technology, especially uh, where cinema is concerned. So if somebody asks me, uh, what would you have been if not in films? I wouldn't know because I don't know anything else. So this, I, th I think this credit is completely my father's. I think he, he made me what I am today. No, I'm sure, I'm sure it is because it was, uh, for all of us from the industry, we know of Viruji's contribution and, and what he did, what he brought to, you know, action and bringing in that level of contemporaneous to our films uh, way back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, etc. But over the last three decades, uh, friends, uh, 
I'm not too sure how much you're aware. I'm sure you've seen Ajay's films and uh, his ability to sort of move from action uh, to complete wacky comedy to being uh, involved in a thriller like Drisham to actually portraying, you know, uh, a character from our history like Tanaji, which, by the way, in 2020 went on to becoming the large the biggest grossing film, aggregating 279 crores. You've emerged as one of the tallest actors, uh, undoubtedly, Ajay. Uh, and you've shown immense leadership uh, and entrepreneurial zest. And that's really what I want to talk about. Because from being a producer uh, to now owning a studio, to even entering the world of... Uh, you've, you've started... NY FX Wala, and you've started a cinema chain, you've acquired a cinema chain, NY Cinemas in New York. Uh, NY, by the way, are, is, is an acronym for Nisa and Yug, his two children. Tell us about, you know, your journey from the creative side into the business aspect of cinema, because you've chosen also very apt. I think uh, VFX is a phenomenal area. Uh, what is NY VFX Wala been doing? So, like I said, uh, I've always loved the technical side of filmmaking. And uh, it used to always feel that uh, at one point of time that we can't do what Hollywood can do. You know, we, we used to struggle because we didn't have that kind of technology and people weren't trained in that manner. And uh, I was, like I said, I was, since I was a kid, I was always fascinated uh, to do something which would make us stand at par with Hollywood. And uh, I remember the first time VFX was used, I, I used it in a film called Pyar Do Naitha, I think that was 98, 99, where the first uh, machine had come in. Nobody knew how to use it, and I was the first one to do it. So there are a lot of firsts I've tried to do because I love to upgrade, you know? And, and that's how slowly I went on to start, uh, starting a VFX studio of my own, which is Touchwood, uh, one of the best uh, VFX studios in the country, and you can it can compete with anywhere in Hollywood. And uh, there are lots of cameras and technologies which I try to bring in it, bring it in first time. They were expensive, but now everybody's using it. So it's that passion towards filmmaking, complete filmmaking, where you talk about cinemas. Uh, if you if you visit any of our cinemas, you will have a different experience completely. It's not like a regular cinema, so you need to go there and see it. So it's that passion of experience of watching a film or making a film where audiences go in and watch a film also. They should have a very different experience. I think it's just that passion and that love of cinema, and I would like to keep doing that till I... Uh, no, keep at it, because in that kind of teased me up to you. You talked three, four times about technology and uh, where we sit today, uh, media, we, you know, this is a forum which is essentially made up of media, marketeers, agencies. And uh, we're at this amazing culmination of, you know, where media, storytelling, technology, these worlds are kind of coming together. Almost like a cube-like sense, you know, you can move from audio to video to games to VFX to uh, augmented reality, virtual reality. When you find so much change happening today, are platforms where consumers are going to are no longer just cinema halls. They get it at home, you know, uh, OTT platforms. The whole style of movie making with VFX has gone into a narrative which is so immersive. Tell us, you know, how do you see as, as a leader of, you know, Hindi cinema, What's your outlook the next five, 10 years? Uh, do you see audiences adapting or do you see storytellers embracing these mediums? Uh, in the sense, the storytellers need to, need, to, need to grow and change with the changing times and with uh, the audiences. Um, there was a point where uh, we weren't exposed to so much of international cinema. And uh, now, because of the OTT platforms and the technology and the connectivity and the internet, I think everybody is watching everything. And 
we have a competition. We have a competition in the sense where quality of films is concerned, storytelling is concerned. Uh, you also have to adapt to the newer generation, the way they started. I mean, I learned a lot from my children and their friends. Uh, you know, so many times, uh, my, my daughter, she watches a film and she's watching it on 2x. Yes, and I'm like, how, right. how, how can you understand a film on 2x? You're going so fast. And she says, no, I got the point and this is how, otherwise it gets very boring. So you need to learn that, you know, patience is running out. They're on Insta, they're, you know, they, the patience is not more than 30 seconds. They keep changing. So how do you engage the audience and keep the audience engaged is the most important thing. And for us, filmmaking can be on OTT, theatres. Theatre experience can never go, I would say, because it's, it's a different experience watching a, watching a big film on, uh, on, uh, on screen. But yes, we have to decide what to make for theatres and what to make for OTT. So we need to adapt ourselves. Sure. So and since you talk about your daughter, Nisa, by the way, who's 20, and my daughter is 18 and a half, and this 1.5 or 2x is a standard. It comes to them from their learning, you know, because in YouTube, they'll just go and they learn at that speed itself. So that's it. But I'm sure, you know, your son who's younger, he's probably already multitasking because whilst he may be watching something on the screen, but he's do. playing they a game at do. the same time. They all yeah. do. They all can do so many things. We, we need to concentrate on one thing and they are multitasking and they're doing five things at a time and they are doing it perfectly. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and that is what, as I said, you know, brings us to the world of media, entertainment, gaming, the metaverse, all kind of converging. My last question to you, because we are an audience like this. Uh, uh, Ajay, you've, you've been a brand that's, you know, sort of sustained and grown over the last 32 years. Uh, the IA, as I mentioned, is a body which is, uh, represents the best of media and agencies, etc. You've endorsed numerous brands. Uh, just out of curiosity, say in the last five, ten years, can you name me two brands that you believe did justice to your persona and they in turn benefited as well? You know, how can you name maybe two of those commercials which um, strike out for you? I can, but I wouldn't. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll take to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think uh, anything you'd like to tell the audience before what's new coming in 23? What are some For of me, the films that are coming? Uh, the film which I've just completed is uh, Maidan, which is a lovely uh, true story uh, in the 50s. Uh, when uh, I, I, I don't think a lot of people know about it, but... Uh, when it was the golden era of football for India. India was, India won the Asia Cup but because of only one man and uh, it's his story. So that will be out soon and uh, right now I would be starting to shoot for a film called Singam, which is Singam 3. Fantastic. <laughs> Ajay, we wish you all the very best and once again on behalf of IA, I thank you for sort of extending and being this exemplary leader that you have been for India. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that was an amazing conversation. Ajay Degun, uh, a trailblazer in his own right. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, can we have a big round of applause for both of them? And now to present our next set of awards, welcoming back on stage our jury chairperson, Nader Godridge, along with Sir. We want you to please join us on the stage. So I'd just like to mention it truly is an honor to have you back on stage every time. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this evening. Now, I'd also like to welcome Mr. Ramesh Narayan, IAA Mancom member and founder, Canco Advertising Private Limited. And Mr. Abhishek Karnani, Vice President IAA India Chapter 
and director the Free Press Journal. While our presenters will be presenting the next two awards, we have seen quite a few marketers join us on stage and win this evening. But we are going to shift gears a little and award a few exceptional leaders. Our next two categories focuses on media. Our next award looks at the leader who has been at the helm of some of the most influential publications and media outlets, guiding and shaping the narrative of our times, who fearlessly pursues truth, upholds journalistic integrity, and shapes impactful stories that resonate worldwide. Let us have a look. The IAA Editor of the Year is P.V. Chandra from Matrubhumi. The Managing Editor of Matrubhumi, a prominent industrialist and a social activist. He has also served as the President of the Indian Newspaper Society, Chairman of Kerala Regional Committee, and President of Malabar Chamber of Commerce. Let us hear a huge round of applause for P.B. Chandran from Matrabhumi. Mr. Chandran, request you to please say a few words. Mr. Chandran, request you to please say a few words. It will be our honor. Thank you for your honor, and thank you to AA. Thank you. Our next award focuses on a leader that not only excels in their field, but has also left an enduring legacy on the media landscape. Fearlessly embracing the power of storytelling, and the freedom of expression to shape public opinion, inform and inspire millions. Let us have a look. The IAA Media Person of the Year is Atidev Sarkar from ABP Group. Celebrating their centennial year last year, what started as a humble newspaper in 1922 in Bengal is now one of India's largest media group that has spread its wings to publications, television channels, and a strong digital presence. Please, once again, for Ali Dave Sarkar from ABP Group. So may I request you to please say a few words? Thank you very much, I mean, to the IA for this award. I must say it's a little um, awe-inspiring to be in front of such giants such as Mr. Godridge, such as Mr. Poonawala, and the many other giants in front of us today. Um, I would like to thank the IA for considering me. And I hope all of you continue to support the cause of the free press because we need all the support we can get. Thank you very much. Thank you and congratulations. Now with that, thank you to our presenters. Now this sir, we will not let you go. <laughs> all right. To present our next set of awards and to join sir on stage, please welcome Srinivasan Swami, IAA Mancom member and managing director, RK Swami Limited. Along with Shreyans Kumar, IAA Mancom member and managing director, Matra Bhumi. Can we please have a big round of applause for them as they join us on stage?
Thank you for joining us. You will be presenting our next two awards, these ones to leaders in advertising. Our next category looks at the leader that has continued to innovate, redefine, and set benchmarks for the advertising fraternity by delivering innovative campaigns that captivate hearts and minds alike. By not only nurturing a culture of creativity within their organizations, but inspiring their teams to push boundaries and deliver all inspiring work. Let us take a look. The IAA Creative Agency Leader of the Year is Raj Deepa Das from Leo Burnett. Countless victories in his shield, including the most medals won by an Indian agency at Khan 2000. 23. Let us hear a few transplants one more time for Raj Deepak Das from Leo Burnett. Mr. Das, request you to please say a few words. Uh. First thing, I thought I would not be the only one on T-shirt, but thank you, sir. The second person on T-shirt. Uh, I, I love it how what Nandini said, right? It's uh, leaders, create leaders. And, uh, but the important thing is leader can't be a leader with <coughs> amazing people that work with you to make you a leader. And that's my team there. You know, love you guys. All black. And uh, my wife, who is there in green, we are seeing her from Leo Burnett, that's why. Love you, babe. And thanks to everyone, everyone. Like, amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Das. Give it up for him one more time and the team. Thank you. Our next category, ladies and gentlemen, looks at leaders who, with their exceptional leadership, data-driven insights and ability to adapt to ever-changing consumer behavior have elevated the industry standards and set new benchmarks for success. Let us have a look. The IAA Media Agency Leader of the Year is Ajay Gupte from Wavemaker. Leading just a six-year-old company. He has been instrumental in the agency's entry into the areas of e-commerce, martech, app tech, performance marketing and content, among others. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ajay Gupte from Wave Maker. Mr. Gupte, question, please take the mic. Uh, thank you, thank you for this uh, incredible honor. Uh, thank you to the IA. Uh, such a such an honor to be standing here with with uh, such such prestigious people. Uh, I'm hugely honored. <coughs> uh, you know, firstly, I'd like to thank my clients. Uh, an incredible. Uh, set of clients that we work with, which have given us the opportunity to do the kind of work we've been doing. And my incredible team of 800 wave makers who make us proud every day. I also have my leadership team here, some of them. Thank you, guys. You are just incredible. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. And thank you so much to our presenters for joining us here. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Please give it up for them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we move to our next award, I'd like to really come down and uh, celebrate this momentous milestone with each one of you present here. This is indeed our 10th edition 
we mark a decade today. And I want to thank each one of you present over here who has contributed in making this a successful journey for us. Um, so it'll be amazing to come and uh, have a little chat with you guys and get to know what will be your memorable experience, a moment, a memory that you have of the IAA Leadership Awards. So um, with that, I'd, li I'd love to ask, uh, and starting with Megha, ma'am, how are you? <laughs> it's so lovely to see you one more time, always. I'd like to know, what is that memory that you have of IAA that, you know, delights you? Something that you'd like to share. Today we mark, you know, the 10th edition. I am very honored because this is my third. It's my hat trick. So, ma'am, over to you. Um. So many memories. I've been associated with IA for the last 10 years. So yeah, I am also in the perfect 10 space. Um, but I think the memory for um, was the last last year's leadership awards, uh, where I got to uh, jive and hang out with Ranveer Singh, who won the who won one of uh, the uh, the brand ambassador award, I think. And uh, so yeah, that was a nice memory to remember. And uh, I think just. It's wonderful to see I Leadership Award come to such an amazing, perfect 10 space. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Thank you for sharing your memory. I also remember that lovely moment where um, Ranveer was right on the stage and he really uh, gave a little tiny performance for us. And um, he told you that, ma'am, this doesn't happen free. Yeah? And you told him the check will be in the email. Did it really reach him? I'm just, I'm just kidding. Thank you so much for that. Um, lovely. Uh, I would love to ask a question to the table here as well. I'm sure we have a lot of memories, sir. Um, anyone would like to share a little memory of our journey of IAA Leadership Awards? Yes, but uh, yes, over to you, Amnar. So uh, the legend is here behind us. We'll be talking about it later. But the first IA Leadership Award, we had a jury meet in a five-star hotel where everybody spoke and Pradeep Guha shut everybody down, saying that you guys don't know anything. <laughs> and that memory still remains. I mean, he used to throw a light on what we are thinking very differently. Um, it all started with Raj Nayak relentlessly pursuing this, uh, this award. And uh, uh, amazing journey for the last 10 years. Uh, but we are missing PG today, uh, 10 years that we, we all started together. Thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, yes, Nandini ma'am, you mentioned somebody who'd like to share this, who would be shifted. Yes, I think they're busy, but we will get back to them. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to move ahead. And thank you once again, as we reach the 10th edition Thank you for your incredible support through our journey. I request all my dear friends to please take your seats as we come to our next award, ladies and gentlemen. And to present our biggest award this evening, I'd once again welcome back on stage Ms. Nandini Dias and Mr. Nash Pandey. Please join us. And now for the big one of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, our ultimate award this evening is the biggest honor that the IAA bestows in India. So to present this, may I also kindly request all the past presidents of IAA India chapter to join us on stage. May I also request Mr. Jedi Bose, an industry veteran, to join us on stage. My friend Megha Tata, please. Neeraj, Sam, Sam is here. Mr. Swami. 
राज Roger Pereira please join us Please give it up for our leaders on stage Doesn't the stage just look incredible Okay. In the Indian Marcom fraternity, we have constantly seen great leaders emerge, take shape, redefine the industry, lead from the front and help shape the industry through various initiatives like this one. Those who with great vision and merit have led their organizations and contributed to the industry at large. Sometimes even silently over the years let us have a look we are proud to induct into iaa hall of fame dr bhaskar das joining a group of extraordinary leaders in the iaa hall of fame ladies and gentlemen The India chapter of the uh, International Advertising Association is pleased to induct Dr. Bhaskar Das into its Hall of Fame. for over four decades of distinguished service to the communications industry for his noteworthy contributions to the print and electronic sectors of the industry for his long and outstanding contribution to industry associations like the advertising club and the india chapter of the international Advert advertising association for his meritorious efforts to bring the advertising industry closer to academia for his contribution for a significant contribution to imparting knowledge to students in the media and entertainment space as a professor and mentor and for always remaining curious and inspiring others to keep learning thank you for the inspiration you have created for us ladies and gentlemen come on one more time a big 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 round of applause stay back and thank you to all our presenters and past presidents thank you for joining us the stage is all yours sir over to you thank you i prefer to talk from the podium good evening uh prefer to talk from the podium because so that my you know knees are shaking it is not seen at least and when kiara advani is sitting here no one is interested in listening to me i know very well <laughs> dear friends esteemed colleagues and distinguished guests i am not a very extempo speaker so i have to read it from mobile like the gen z i stand before you today with a heart full of gratitude 
humility and overwhelming sense of camaraderie these you have been my karma bhumi as long as i have been here in the embarrassingly 40 odd years of my career i've come to believe that every moment spent working is a balance sheet of achievements and failures each holding its invaluable assets having said that no career is a solitude endeavor is a solitary endeavor just like life itself it's a tapestry of woven to taken together with the threads of countless collective efforts in fact in my journey i've come to realize everyone and everything has been my teacher learning and gratitude these are the two cornerstones of my being and i'm grateful for all that i learn i'm also grateful for, for the people in my life who have helped me you know i remember very fondly mr pradeep guha and of course sundar swami ramesh narayan and all the past presidents who are here i have learned from all of them and i am really really grateful to them and i am continuously learning from them fame i have never really chased but in this hall where legends that i have looked up and learned from it makes me emotional just apart being being inducted into the ia hall of fame is an incredible honor and i thank each one of you for being part of my journey that has led me here may god bless us all thank you once again ladies and gentlemen please i like when sir said that you are my karma bhumi indeed what an honor I just want to ask everyone at this moment are you all having a good time Thank you all right and now to present our next award please welcome on stage Neeraj Roy IAA Mancom member and founder Hangama Digital Media Entertainment Private Limited along with Megha Tata immediate past president iaa india chapter and ceo cosmos maya thank you for joining us our next award look at the magnetic charm credibility and influence of brand endorsers making them the face of some of the most iconic brands those who have not only captured our hearts with their captivating personas but have also seamlessly integrated with the essence of the brands they represent let us have a look the iaa brand endorser of the year is kiara advani Ladies and gentlemen the IAA brand endorser of the year give it up for Diana Aswani Congratulations. Uh thank you Ms. Tata for joining us here. Before we take the conversation ahead, Kiara, would you like to say a few words on this moment? Good evening ladies and gentlemen. I feel extremely honored and humbled to be here winning an award amongst so many legends in this room tonight. So thank you IAA. for giving me this award as brand endorser of the year i actually started my tryst with the camera and filmmaking at the age of 8 months i was a baby and the first thing i did was an advertisement um for a brand 
And now winning the brand endorser of the year truly feels like I've come a whole circle. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you to each and every brand that has put in their faith in choosing me as their face. Um, and the audience for believing in everything that I, I do and I share with them. So this is truly humbling and truly gratifying. Thank you so much. Now the stage is set, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be another incredible conversation. I'm going to leave it to both of you. Thank you. Once again, friends, I'd first like all of you, once again, to put your hands together and give a big, big round of applause to our dear friend, Bhaskar Das. Bhaskar, it's an indeed an honor to be here with you. I just did yeah, that. You did I that. had a feeling you were going through. Right. Like, That's so sweet. I'm feeling so embarrassed right now to get so many claps from all these tall ones. No, we, 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 are cel we are celebrating something very, very special. This Bhaskar has been inducted into the IA Hall of Fame, which is very dear and very special to us. But we'll come to you, Kiara, and you're also very dear and very special to us. Thank you. Uh, so, in a very short span, ladies and gentlemen, this young lady here has already done 14 films in Hindi cinema, two in Southern, Nine of those films have already crossed 100 crores each. I believe two have gone into the 200 crore number. Some would say you are clearly well on the way to being sort of, you know, the Indian cinema's leader, as it were, in the manner at such young age, in such a competitive world, Kiara. Tell us how you've been able to achieve this in such a short, short span of time? Honestly, I've just had fun. I wanted Sounds to do this ever since I can remember. I wanted to be an actor. And my approach towards the craft, towards my choices, have been purely heart and instinctively. Um, and that hasn't changed. I've not allowed the success or failure to get to me in any way. I've, I've somehow managed to have those blinkers on and just gone on every day on this journey, cherishing every moment, truly. Um, and somewhere along this journey, I think um, the audience has showered tremendous love on me. They have resonated with the work I've done, with the person that they see on screen and off screen. And it's very humbling. Um, a lot of credit to all the filmmakers, all the producers who've put in a lot of faith in me, seen my talent, seen the potential, but I still feel I'm just scratching the surface and there's a long, long way to go. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and that's the spirit. But this young lady here endorses hair oil, footwear, pet food, banks and biscuits. Uh, 25 brands, ladies and gentlemen, in this uh, very, very short, but very, very illustrious career of yours. My question to you, Kara, is in, in today's time where you've, you've truly come and you're sort of uh, talking to a generation which is completely digital. You yourself uh, have millions and millions of followers. Uh, and whilst there is these two sides, you know, there is the film and the creative side, and then there is, you know, the side which is associating with brands which resonate with you, uh, whom you would like to lend your voice to, as it were. Tell us, how uh, is there a mechanism you go by when you make these choices? And how important is the importance of social media in all of this? Because I reckon many of these brands are as much coming to you, both for the creative work as well as the large communities that you have as well. Sure. I feel... Well, when I started out personally, it seemed like this perk of the job. As an actor, all of a sudden, all these brands want to associate with you. But as I, you know, as I grew in my craft, in my career, what I realized was initially also, I mean, I always chose to associate with brands that either I was personally consuming, a consumer of, or 
I believed in and I knew I this is something that I want to lend my name to and I know that you know there is a similar um, shared value or personality that matches and complements me with the brand and vice versa. But as I went along, I realized that here are these million people, like you say, on social media who trust you, respect you, follow you. Um, and there's a sense of responsibility there. There's a sense of, you know, they, you don't want to let them down. And if so many people are putting that kind of faith in you, then it's your responsibility to stay authentic and true to who you are. And I think that's who I am. I'm quite real when it comes to whatever I do. Films, you know, the good, the bad, all of it, it's all, I wholeheartedly own and stand by each one of them. And similarly with the brands I choose, I feel, um, apart from the fact of me being a consumer or believing in these products, I also feel, you know, there is, there is of course, this, this entire team that the brand works with who knows these are the stats and there's a reason they're coming to you as an actor. Um, they've done their homework. So it's important to see what you bring to the table, but also what they bring to the table for you, how you complement each other. And if that, you know, that synergy works, I think, um, I think it's lovely. I've, I've been fortunate to be amongst this list of brand that you've, brands that you've said. I've, I've had very long term, uh, and when I say long term, it's in my short span of my career, but it's for probably like five years of the seven, eight years that I've been here. So for me, that, that, that shows something, that means something. And I'd like to take these ahead with me. I think it's interesting to grow with the brand. No, I think, I think you will, Kiara. And with the attitude you have, most certainly you will. Because one of the key things that you spoke about is being real. Yeah. You know, uh, this medium, if there is one thing that resonates, uh, whether it is with an audience wherein someone is wanting to connect with a political uh, person, wants to connect with someone they inspire, they're inspired by, uh, someone who's just a mentor, they just want to take to their teaching. The aspect of being real is, is so, so, so uh, true. Uh, so I know it's about six months or so, but it's not been a year. So congratulations are in order. Thank you. And I'm sure all of you will join me in congratulating uh, Kiara and Siddharth on, on their marriage. And we wish you on behalf of IA a very, very successful, very, very happy marriage. Uh, have you thought, uh, you know, there have been this uh, for many years, I mean, many decades, when you look back, there is a fascination, of course, between media and fans and their love and affection for public figures and artists such as yourselves. But there's also an association with you as a family as well. And uh, that in its own way kind of brings uh, a different kind of responsibility with some brands. So have the two of you, pardon my ignorance, actually worked on a bunch of brands together as well? So we're very clear about what we want to do together as a brand. There are certain attributes that we look um, for when we want, you know, whenever we decide to partner with the brand. Before we were married, um, there were two brands that we signed on individually. We, um, we were not a pair of that kind, like it was not a husband-wife kind of pairing. But now that people will probably come to us as a pair, as a couple. Um, so for that, we have thought about it. And I think for both of us, the quality, the, you know, the family values um, and the legacy of the brand would be very important. We have sure. said no to a few and our managers will hate us for it. But we just feel that because the audience has given us a lot of love as a couple, especially, um, there's probably a certain sense of being self-made. We are both individuals who've come into this career by ourselves, made it here on our own. There's a lot of hard work that they resonate with. So I think um, they, I think they will also be looking forward to what we do as a brand when we decide to to lend our name um, to a brand. So that's something we've actually put in. That's probably the only thing I've put in so much thought to in my career, but it's uh, and good. that's why we signed nothing as No, yet. it's 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 good consciousness. So maybe you shouldn't put so much thought to it. It's 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 a good consciousness to have. I must ask you first. Let me tell you. Let me take this opportunity because you know. You're an inspiration and leader to a younger generation. Uh, and uh, I'd like to tell you an initiative that some of my colleagues here at IA uh, initiated a few years ago, which we are all very proud of. 
and uh, see the world of media, marketing, communication. Uh, the issue of gender sensitization has been an issue for many decades. Uh, simple things like, uh, you know, uh, a couple walks into a, a store like, say, Chroma or something and is looking to buy a washing machine and uh, automatically the person who is wanting to serve is probably talking to the woman as opposed to, uh, you know, so from very little things to very profound, very prominent things. And my colleagues, uh, Nina and, and Mega, uh, we, uh, for the last four or five years, there have been an entire initiative around uh, sort of creating more awareness about bringing both diversity, sense of equality, and sensitizing communication. So my question is, you are in a new Hindi cinema world or Hindi world. Are you beginning to find a sense of parity, you know, whether it's with the roles that you get or the salaries that you make? Are you beginning to get that or are we still some distance away? Well, I think this is a very, very uh, large debate that can be had. And this is, like you said, it's world over in every field. Um, if I have to strictly stick with the ad world, I feel it's changing there. But I think it's, I'd rather speak for myself. I think it's important to value yourself. It's important to not be deluded um, and know where you stand, what you bring to the table. I would not want to compare myself to what my male or female counterpart is receiving. But if I feel this is my worth, then I would like to associate with people who see the same. And I am growing um, and I am happy with the way I'm valued. So I would stick to that. And I think it's important to see how you are growing from, from where you've come. Um, and that's how I look at it. I think that's fair and we, we respect that. Uh, we also recognize that, you know, when you start young, uh, you know, you're still sort of finding your way around, but we just want to say that as an association which looks at media and the agency and the market of fraternity, uh, you know, we'd just like to leave the message that, you know, we got your back. We're thinking about you uh, as well. And, and that's, that's, that's really the message. Uh, my last uh, question to you, this is an uh, August gathering of uh, CEOs, CXOs, creative directors of various companies. You already have 25 brands you know, in the bag, as it were. So, but if you were to give a message back to the community that uh, what they should really look for in brand Kiara uh, as somebody who's dependable, somebody who's real, uh, what is it? What's that message that you'd like to give uh, using the IA as a platform? How lovely. This feels like I'm going to be selling myself right now. <laughs> Well, like the, all the, the lovely attributes you said, um, but I feel I would like to resonate universally. I would like to, I would like for people to, you know, I, I was told this once by someone that a quality that they saw in me was being relatable yet aspirational, which is quite a unique combination. And that is something which I, I see that even my brands usually tap into when we make our ads. So that is, I think, you don't have to be just one type. You don't just have to be the girl next door or the dependable one or the family person or the one who's empowering women or the strong, independent woman. You can be all of it. And that's who I am. And I think that's who today's woman is. I think that's who she is. And that's who I think I am. Fantastic. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together once again for Kiara Advani. Thank Kiara, you. may thank you, you grow so and may you prosper. Thank you. Sir. Wish you all the very best. And thank you for being here. That was indeed a wonderful conversation. And Kiara, I must say, you have a beautiful, humble heart. And we wish you all the success in all your endeavors in future. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to sum it up by saying this was a very, very inspiring evening. As we wrap up, Today's amazing day. Do not forget to join India's delegation to Ad Asia 2023 in Seoul. To be a part of the Indian delegation and avail a special rate, please register with the Advertising Club before August 15. 
The numbers are given on the screen right now. We look forward to meeting you in Seoul. For the last time this evening, let us hear it for our partners tonight. Celebration partner, D.I. Joe. Associate partner, Tata Group. Supporting partner, Times Network and Titan. Knowledge partner, Lodestar UM. And web media partners, Ad Gully. Camping India, Media Brief, Media News for You, and MXM India. Thank you, everyone, for being such a lovely audience. This is your host, Angela Rebello, signing off, and have a lovely evening ahead. Thank you.